Hey, hey everyone, welcome to the channel. But today we are working on a fun project. We've got our kids' play loft up here uh, that I planned on having this loft right above our bathroom when I built this house two years ago. We haven't even used it yet. Um, I knew we needed a ladder to get up there, but what type of ladder are we gonna do? We're right over the main walkway here, so just having a ladder permanently here gets in the way of the walkway um, getting into this room in our house. So a sliding ladder we could do where you just basically have you know, rollers on the ladder that slide back and forth on a rail. Um, but I thought, you know, this room is our kids' homeschool room. It's where they create and learn and do art and music and math and science and engineering. And this would be an awesome opportunity to implement some simple machines into the system. So this can be kind of a learning experience for them and a chance for them to have fun. Um, so instead of doing a normal sliding ladder, we're gonna do an Acme screw drive ladder using acne rod. Uh, you may have seen acne rod before in like a CNC machine and it's used to move a head rig back and forth. We're going to do the same thing here. So I hope you guys will follow along. Now let's get after it. All right. Hey everyone. So here we are um, with a ladder. You might be wondering, you know, well, what are you guys going to do for a ladder? Well, I built this ladder like six months ago. Um, and of course I didn't get it on video, but it's a really simple little ladder made out of two by sixes of construction lumber. Um, the steps are two by six construction lumber, and then that was sanded and painted. Um, but recently, just this week, we realized, you know what, we need to make this thing a little bit safer. So we added some grip tape to the edge of these steps and then even added handrail so kiddos can grab on here and be really secure going up and down. Um, and this is just a normal pine handrail, um, but we did bump it up a little bit higher off the sides of the ladder by putting a one by one piece of trim underneath that uh, pine handrail. So it's a really nice little rail for gripping. And then um, the bottom of the ladder, you might not be able to see this, but we do have rigid casters there. That's going to allow this ladder to slide back and forth when we get it up um, connected to our acne rod. So here is my assortment of hardware here. Um, we've got our main acne rod, which uh, I got from McMaster. You guys can find this probably from like Surplus Center, um, but McMaster is an awesome one. Obviously, Granger is going to have them as well. Um, and then our Acme Nuts, and I chose to get uh, flange Acme Nuts with a brass nut on the flange. The flange is steel. Um, and then we've got, uh, I'm using a number 25 roller chain. This is a tiny chain, but we'll see if it works. If it doesn't grab nice enough, we will bump it up to like probably a number 40 chain. Um, and some idler sprockets and some just various hardware to get this thing going. And then of course, we already got the handle crank on here. Um, it's kind of a cool little crank, just a couple of pillow block bearings, a little shaft, and then another number 25 uh, sprocket here that's going to drive our chain to our main acne rod that'll be up there. And then got a couple pillow blocks up there for the acne rod. All right, so one other thing I didn't really show you guys, I uh, cut a tiny piece of PVC, and this is gonna act as a sleeve to cover my acne rod um, in the ladder, just so kids aren't pinching their fingers on the screwdriver, because this goes right through the ladder. All right, so now one of the most important pieces of the puzzle is my drive sprocket. All right, well, let's see if it at least does what it's supposed to, kind of. Um, I'll just manually turn this thing, see if I can get this thing to move. Well, it's going. So next up is getting this thing kind of tweaked and aligned, making sure those flanges are perfectly parallel and then getting the chain on there. But it's moving slowly. All right, so I screwed up on one part. So my, my little acne flanges right here, um, 
they need to be perfectly perpendicular to the rod. If they're not perfectly perpendicular, um, you'll like jam the threading. So like there's a little tiny hairline gap on this flange. So I'm gonna have to take these off, um, shim them out to make sure that they're nice and parallel to each other and perpendicular to the rod so that none of the threads are getting like rubbed really hard so that this thing will spin nice and free. All right guys, so we got those locking collars all clamped on uh, to the rod here. Now we are going to move on to the chain mechanism. It was kind of a pain in the butt uh, getting this all torn apart so that we could uh, put some bolts in here and space out our Acme nuts um, or flanges. Um, but it's gonna work out a lot better. Now we have four bolts in there, so we're gonna be able to like shim in and out with some washers. And you're gonna notice, you know, I'm doing a pretty rudimentary Acme drive system for this. This is not industrial use. If you saw this in an industrial use with an Acme rod, you're always going to see a linear rail that actually supports um, the motion of whatever is being moved back and forth with the Acme rod. So the Acme rod is usually just the mechanism that is moving it, but the actual structural force is usually supported by what we'd call like a linear rail with a linear bearing. Um, attached to that rail. Um, I'm not doing that for now. I think it's going to be okay just using this Acme rod as a full support of um, the ladder. You know, the ladder is pretty much leaning against the wall, so it's a really light duty application, so I'm not too worried about it. Now we're going to move on to the chain drive system. You're going to see I've got um, my sprocket way at the end of my Acme rod over here and our handle down here. Now I could do a straight shot with a chain just straight to that, but just to make it interesting, we're going to do a couple idler sprockets uh, here so we can do kind of like a 90 degree angle with the chain down. And then that'll also allow me to use the idler sprockets as like a chain tensioner if we need it in the future. Um, and it'll just be kind of interesting to show kids how you can chance, transfer the direction of that force around the Adler pulleys, so it'll be kind of fun, but let's get after it.
All right, so I got this number 25 chain all hooked up. It's a tiny chain, super hard to get uh, just a chain breaker to even break it. And then the quick links are tiny, so it's kind of tedious, but now we've got this up. So now what we got to do is adjust our little idler sprockets to tension this chain. Alright guys, so I got everything hooked up, got the chain going over here, acne rod all tightened up, and I noticed crunchy chain. So I've got an alignment issue, but it should be a quick fix. This is what happens when you buy hardware off of Amazon. This pillow block is about two or three millimeters taller than this pillow block. So I gotta shim this one up to get the sprocket to tilt that way so that we have good alignment. Um, but yeah, it's, this guy's a little bit shorter. So one more quick fix and then we'll see how it goes. All right, so I got a couple washers under there. Let's see if that does the trick baby down. All right, now we'll see if that fix a clunking noise. All right, guys, well, it's working pretty good. Well, that wraps up our sliding ladder project. I encourage you guys, if you enjoyed this video, to hit the like and subscribe button if you wanna see some more fun content from me. And have a great one. I hope you guys continue to create and explore and have fun. See ya. What was the most challenging part of this build? So it was really just having the time to do it. And I'm on my face. Super. Exactly. Um,